Pippin Pharmaceuticals in association with Higher Secondary Principals Forum. Hi students, today's topic is very interesting, goodwill, valuation and treatment of goodwill on admission of a partner. So that's what we are going to discuss today in detail. What does goodwill mean? Yes, it means a lot of things. It means the uh, good reputation of the business, the import licenses the business is enjoying, the market conditions of the business. If a business is a monopoly uh, situation, it will enjoy good reputation and uh, all these reputation and efficiency of the management, location, customer relationship. There are so many factors that affecting the value of goodwill. Now, ultimately, what I want to emphasize is that all this must result into super profit earning ability of a business. So goodwill is nothing but the ability of a business to earn super profits. Now what does super profits mean? It will mean the profits earned by the business is more than the similar concerns. And this will have some effect on the business. The business will be able to retain the present customers. The customers will come again and again and enjoy the products. They buy the products. They even recommend the products to others. Okay, so it will attract new customers. This happens easily. You can identify when you watch a good movie. You enjoy that movie and even you will advertise without receiving anything. You will advertise, you will recommend that movie to your friends. So the present customers will even advertise for the business and they will bring in new, more customers. This will create the super profit earning ability of the business. Now, when do we have to revalue goodwill? The valuation for goodwill arises in these situations. When there is a sale of business, when there is reconstitution of the partnership firm. Do you remember what is reconstitution? Yes, it happens on admission, retirement of partner, death of partner, insolvency of partner, even mere change in the profit and loss sharing ratio, there is a reconstitution. Okay, it is nothing but a change in the agreement. So, dissolution of partnership firm also warrants the need for valuation of goodwill. When there is amalgamation of uh, firms, goodwill must be valued. So these are the different situations and we are going to specifically concentrate on good valuation of goodwill on admission of a partner. Valuation of goodwill on admission of a partner should be done because the new partner will now enjoy super profitability without any efforts. A new partner is entering the firm and he is able to enjoy more profits than similar concerns. The super profit. Who made this super profit earning ability of the business? Who worked on the reputation? Who worked on the brand? Who worked on the location? Who saw that the business is having an efficient management? Who got all the import license or all special advantages of the business? It is the old partners the existing partners, now they are going to lose a share of their super profits. So they should be compensated, it is very natural. So the old partners must be compensated. For this purpose, the new partner must bring in an additional amount towards goodwill, which is called premium. So the new partner must bring in an additional amount or premium and this should be distributed among the old partners in their sacrifice ratio. 
so this is why we need to value goodwill now the valuation of goodwill how do we do it goodwill is an intangible asset it's not like a furniture or machinery or land building which are tangible assets which are very easy to value revalue okay but goodwill is intangible i cannot see it you can't see it okay no one can see it only we can experience the goodwill in a business how with the super profit earning ability of a business so goodwill valuation becomes estimation we are going to estimate goodwill using certain methods like average profit method super profit method capitalization method so we will apply certain methods and we will value goodwill and these are estimates they are these are not actual valuation like a, a tangible asset okay tangible assets can be easily valued for example if you want to know the value of a furniture you can find out how much material wood is used what is the cost of the wood uh, so many cubic feet okay how many carpenters have to work on that so the wages of the carpenters and what are the other expenses needed you can add all these and you can say this much would be the exact cost of the furniture that's not the case with an intangible asset like goodwill now when i say goodwill is an intangible asset please remember it is not fictitious fictitious assets are different from intangible asset intangible assets enjoy value you can sell goodwill you can sell goodwill at the time of sale of the business of course okay you cannot sell goodwill partly you can sell goodwill at the time of uh, uh, disposing the firm okay if you are sending selling your firm to another person goodwill can be sold you can get a value for that goodwill has a value whereas fictitious assets don't have any value so please remember goodwill is an intangible asset it has a value and you will do the estimation of goodwill or valuation of goodwill using these methods what are these methods average profit method super profit method and capitalization method at goa board you will have to solve problems based on average profit method and uh, uh, super profit method so we will be solving problems based on these two methods under average profit method you are considering goodwill equivalent to average profits of the business multiplied by a number of years purchases okay so how do you find the average profits average profit is nothing but the total profits of certain number of years 3 years or 5 years of profit you add up together then you get the total profit divided by the number of years if you are adding 3 years profits you will divide it by number 3 if you are adding 5 years of profits you will divide it by number 5 so you will get the average profit and this average profit is multiplied with a number of years purchases it can be one year purchases two years purchases three years purchases and so on so we will value goodwill on the basis of average profit method using this formula let us look at this question read carefully the profit for five years are as follows you are given 2015 16 17 18 and 19 so you are given the profits for 5 years okay you may be given profits of 5 years 6 years but you have to read the question carefully calculate goodwill of the firm on the basis of 4 years purchases so we have to multiply with 4 four years purchases of 5 years average profits yes we have to consider 5 years profits to find the average so how do we calculate it the total profits how do we get the total profit you will add all the profits 4 lakh 
प्लस थ्री लैख नाइन्टी एट थाउजेंड प्लस फोर लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड प्लस फोर लैख फोर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड एंड ऑल्सो फाइव लैख सो दिस इज द टोटल प्रॉफिट सो ऑल दिस यू शुड एड अप यू विल गेट द टोटल प्रॉफिट एंड डिवाइड बाई नंबर ऑफ इयर्स हाउ मेनी इयर्स वी हैव कंसिडर्ड वी हैव कंसिडर्ड फाइव इयर्स सो यू आर गोइंग टू गेट द एवरेज प्रॉफिट नाउ एंड दिस एवरेज प्रॉफिट यू विल मल्टीप्लाई विद द नंबर फोर इट इज गिवन फॉर इयर्स परचेज सो यू आर गोइंग टू गेट टू लैख ट्वेंटी वन लैख नाइन्टी थ्री थाउजेंड बाय फाइव फोर लैख थर्टी एट थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड सो द एवरेज इज फोर लैख थर्टी एट थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड मल्टीप्लाइड बाय फोर यू आर गेटिंग सेवेंटीन लैख फिफ्टी फोर थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड सो दिस इज द वैल्यू ऑफ गुडविल नाउ दिस इज द वैल्यू ऑफ गुडविल ऑफ द फर्म ऑफ द बिजनेस वेन न्यू पार्टनर इज एडमिटेड he has to contribute new partners a share if he is having one fourth share you will find out one fourth of this amount and that's the amount the new partner has to contribute now sometimes instead of simple average profit method we may calculate weighted average profit method and this method must be used when there is a tendency of increasing or decreasing indent increasing or decreasing trend in the profits of the firm so in this case what we do the profits of the firm for example the profits are say 20000 for the first year okay second year it became 30000 and third year it became say 50000 so there is a tendency of increasing profit these profits will be multiplied by certain weight okay which will be given to you which will be given the weight is say 1 for the first year second year it is 2 and third year it is 3 so you will find out the weighted profits weighted profit of the first year will be 20000 itself second year it will be 60000 and third year it will be 150000 so you will get 1 lakh 50 plus 60 210 2 lakh 30000 so this 2 lakh 30000 is the weighted profit okay now this weighted profit you will find average of that how do we find average by dividing by the total weight 1 plus 2 plus 3 the total weight is 6 so you will do 2 lakh 30000 divided by 6 then you will get the average profit 2 lakh 30000 divided by 6 you will get the average profit it is going to be 38000 like that it will go and this will be multiplied by number of years purchases number of years purchases okay so this is how you are going to get so the profit will be multiplied with the weight and you will find the weighted profit and this weighted profit will be divided by the total weights then you get the weighted average profit which is multiplied by number of years purchases so it is similar to the weight uh, average profit method now let us go to the super profit method of calculating goodwill super profit method of calculating goodwill here we know that goodwill is the ability of a business to create super profits what exactly is super profit it is nothing but the excess of actual profit over and above the normal profit of a business okay every business will have certain normal rate of return which is called nrr normal rate of return so this nrr is the expected profit or estimated profit or normal profit a business is expecting suppose if it is a 10 lakh a 10% and the investment is a 3 lakh so the business is investing at 10% on 3 lakh that means 30000 rupees 
But if the actual profit earned by the business arrived from the profit and loss account is say 70,000. So actual profit is more than the expected profit or estimated profit which is considered as the super profit. So super profit is calculated using this formula actual profit. It can be the actual profit of one year or it can be average of last few years profits. And from this, we minus the expected profit or estimated profit, then you get the super profit. Now, this super profit is calculated, uh, uh, the estimated profit is calculated, as I explained. On the capital employed, you have to multiply with a normal rate of return, then you will get it. Then you will find out the goodwill. Okay, goodwill is super profit multiplied by number of years purchases. Let us take up a question and see how to calculate super profit. The books of a business showed that the firm's capital employed. So you will notice that capital employed is given. On 31st December 2020 is rupees 5 lakh. So 5 lakh is the capital employed by the business. Profits of the last 5 years are given 40,000, 50,000, 55,000, 70,000 and 85,000. So you are given the profits of last 5 years 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What is the question? You are required to find out the value of goodwill based on 5 years average profits considering 3 years purchases of the super profits of the business. Okay, we have to find out the goodwill on the basis of super profits of the business. Considering 5 years average. Okay, very good. What is the normal rate of return? What is the NRR of the business? Normal rate of return is 10%. So we will calculate the normal profit or expected profit and minus it from the actual profit or average profit. So what would be the no estimated profit? Capital employed is 5 lakh. On 5 lakh, 10% is the uh, estimated profit. And you get 50,000. This 50,000 you have to minus from the average profit. So let us take up the average profit. The average profit will be 40,000 plus 50,000 plus 55,000 plus 70,000 plus 85,000. So when you add all this, you are getting 3 lakh. And uh, divided by number of years, 5. So you will get 60,000. Correct? This is the average profit 60,000 minus what is the estimated or normal profit or expected profit it is calculated on capital employed capital employed is 5 lakh normal rate of return is 10 percent so on 5 lakh 10 percent is 50,000 that means we are expecting only 50,000 profit but actual average profit is 60,000. So here, this will mean that there is a super profit of 10,000 rupees. Now this super profit, you have to multiply by number of years. How many years? Three years purchases. Okay. So let us multiply with the three years purchases. Then we get the goodwill of the firm. So goodwill of the firm on the basis of super profits is 30,000 rupees. And this is the goodwill of the firm. The new partner will have to bring not 30,000, his share of goodwill. If his share is one fifth, so he has to bring 30,000 into one fifth and so on. That we will see when we solve the problems. Now sometimes goodwill may appear in the balance sheet. So we will see what to do with the goodwill appearing in the balance sheet. If goodwill appears in the balance sheet, it is called existing goodwill. Goodwill existing in the books of the firm. And this 
account of asset must be written off at the time of admission of a partner. How do we write off an asset? An asset has a debit balance. When we write it off, it should be cancelled by crediting. So we are going to credit a goodwill account and the amount should be taken from the capital account of the old partners. So the old partners' capital account will be debited in their old ratio and the goodwill account will be cancelled by crediting. So this is what we have to do when we solve a problem. If you are given this in the capital accounts of the partners, suppose there are three partners, A, B and C and these are the capital accounts, you will have to debit capital account and write it to goodwill. The amount should be debited to the account of partner A and partner B, assuming that the partner C is a new partner. So this is how the goodwill account written off if it already appears in the books of the firm. So we learned the valuation of goodwill. Now let us learn how to treat the goodwill account on admission of a partner. On admission of a partner, there can be two situations. One, the new partner brings his share of goodwill in cash. And secondly, the new partner is not able to bring his share of goodwill in cash. So when you read the adjustments, you have to be very careful to see whether it is specifically given that the new partner is bringing his share of goodwill in cash or not because the solution will differ according to the instructions given there. Now, if the new partner brings his share of goodwill in cash, there can be two situations. A, the amount is retained by the partners, amount is retained by the partners, or it can be partially withdrawn by the partners or fully withdrawn by the partners. So there are two situations if the new partner is bringing his share of goodwill to the firm. Whatever amount he is bringing, the old partners will share it and they will credit their capital accounts. After crediting, they can prefer to retain the amount in the business or they can withdraw the amount fully or partially. So let us see how to solve problems based on this. We will begin with the journal entries. When new partner brings his share of goodwill in cash, it is called premium method. Why it is premium method? Because the amount brought in by the new partner is what we mean by premium. The amount brought in by the new partner towards goodwill is what we mean by premium. So premium method refers to the new partner bringing in his share of goodwill amount in cash by check also. You can have uh, two methods. We will discuss the method one first. This is most commonly followed method. So when the new partner brings a cash for goodwill, cash or bank account will be debited, debit what comes in, okay, and goodwill account will be credited. So the entry for cash brought in by the new partner towards goodwill is cash or bank account debtor because it's an asset. Goodwill also is an asset. That much part of the asset will become the, of the new partner. Okay, so it is moving out of the business. So cash or bank account debtor to goodwill account. Now this amount brought in by the new partner should be distributed among the old partners. Okay, so the old partners will take out this amount brought in by the new partner. What will happen to the old partner's capital account? It will of course increase. Increase in capital, increase in liability is a credit. Okay, so you have to credit the capital accounts of the partners. And when goodwill is distributed among the partners, this account of credit account in the goodwill will be cancelled. Now we are going to debit the goodwill account and cancel it. So goodwill account was credited and now we will cancel it by crediting it. So the journal entry is goodwill account debtor to old partner's capital account. 
Now, it's very important to remember capital accounts of the old partners must be credited in their ratio of sacrifice. The sacrifice made towards the new partner. Okay, in that proportion, we will credit the capital accounts of the old partners. So, it's very important old partners capital accounts will be credited with the premium in the ratio of their sacrifice. So, this is a very important point. Please note it. Now, if the partners prefer to retain the amount, there is no entry, nothing is going out of the business, no cash is taken. On the other hand, if partners prefer to withdraw the amount, they may withdraw full amount, they may withdraw part of the amount, okay, then the cash or bank will be credited, that much cash goes out of the business. Bank balance decreases, so there is a decrease in the bank balance or cash or bank account is credited, so you are going to credit cash or bank account. Partners are the receivers, they are withdrawing money from the business, so their account, capital account will be debited, debit the receiver. Debit the receiver, that's the rule we are following. So partners, capital account will be debited, and uh, cash or bank account will be credited. So this is how we record the entries when a new partner brings in cash towards his share in goodwill. Now there is also another method. In this method, when the new partner brings in cash towards goodwill, it is uh, directly credited to his capital account. On the other hand, in the first method, we credited to the goodwill account. So instead of crediting to goodwill account, partner may prefer to keep it in his account and his account will be debited, new partner's account will be debited when it is shared among the old partners. So the old partner's capital accounts will be credited in the sacrifice ratio, but the debit will go to new partner's capital account. Why? because the amount of goodwill was credited in the capital account of the new partner. So only these two accounts are different, otherwise everything is the same in the method 1 and method 2. You may follow the method 1 or method 2 as per the instructions given in the question paper. We will see certain examples. Sunil and Dalip are partners in a firm sharing profits and losses in the ratio of 5 is to 3. So you will note down this is the old ratio of Sunil and the lip. Sachin is the new partner admitted in the firm for one fifth share. So one fifth share of profits is the new partner's share. He brings 4000 as his share of goodwill. So, 4000 is one fifth of the total goodwill. It is given directly as his share of goodwill. We will take the 4000 directly as he is bringing it by check. Show how these transactions would appear in the books of accounts. So, we learned the journal entries. Now, we will see how the entries are to be posted. When the new partner brings a premium of 4000, what is the entry we learned? Bank account debtor to goodwill account. So bank account debtor to goodwill account, it will be shown in the bank account as an increase, bank account increase because we are debiting the bank account with 4,000 rupees. Okay, bank account debtor to goodwill and it will be shown in the goodwill account. I have not shown the goodwill account here. Now this goodwill must be distributed among the old partners in their sacrifice ratio. So what is the entry for that? Goodwill account debtor to old partners capital accounts in their sacrifice ratio. So the old partners capital accounts must be credited by goodwill in their sacrifice ratio. So 4,000 we have to divide in the sacrifice ratio. What is the sacrifice ratio? It's not given in the question. You have learned sacrifice ratio is equal to, okay, old share minus new share or old ratio minus new ratio. Whenever the new ratio is not specifically given, 
it is not given the new ratio of all the partners you will consider sacrifice ratio equal to the new old ratio so here the sacrifice ratio is the same as old ratio so you will divide 4000 in the 5 is to 3 proportion so 4000 multiplied by 5 upon 8 will be 2500 4000 multiplied by 3 upon 8 is 1500 so it is distributed and given to the old partners and in this question they are retaining it because it's not given that they are withdrawing so this is how the goodwill appears in the capital accounts and also in the balance sheet we are showing balance sheet asset side bank account and an addition of the premium brought in by the new partner 4000 so it is added to the bank account if you are preparing the bank account you will show it on the debit side to uh, new partners uh, to goodwill account you will show on the debit side let us take up this question sunil and dalip are partners in a firm sharing profits and losses in the ratio of 5 is to 3 this is the same old ratio Sachin is admitted in the firm for one-fifth share. So Sachin is the new partner and this is the share of the new partner. The new partner brings 4,000 as his share of goodwill by check, similar to the conditions of the previous problem. Here the additional information is old partners withdraw 50% of the premium credited to their accounts. Show how these transactions would appear in the books of accounts. So the amount brought in by the new partner is added to the bank account. So bank account, we are adding premium brought in by such in 4,000. Okay, and this 4,000 must be distributed towards the uh, old partners in their old ratio, uh, in their sacrifice ratio. Here, sacrifice ratio is equal to old ratio because the new ratio is not given. So we will divide 4000 in the ratio 5 is to 3, 5 upon 8 and 3 upon 8 of 4000 will be 2500 and 1500. Now comes the second point to be done. Old partners withdraw 50% of the premium credited to their account. How much is credited to Sunil? 2,500. So half of that he is going to withdraw. What is the entry for that? Old partners capital account debtor to bank account. So when partners withdraw goodwill amount credited, remember you are going to credit the bank account not goodwill account because amount goes out of your bank bank will bank balance will decrease so you will credit the bank account with the amount withdrawn by sunil how much he is withdrawing he is withdrawing half of his amount 2500 into half is 1250 similarly dalip is withdrawing 1500 half of it half of this that is 750 as 1250 and 750 are withdrawn by the partners, it will affect your bank balance. How? Bank balance will decrease. So you have to minus these two figures so that you get your new bank balance. So this is how we do when partners withdraw the premium brought in by the new partner. So please remember, when a new partner brings in goodwill in cash, that must be distributed among the old partners in their sacrifice ratio and if the good pa old partners withdraw this amount it can be full amount partial amount you have to credit the bank account not goodwill account so let us take up this question Srikanth and Raman are partners sharing in a firm profits and losses in the ratio of 3 is to 2 so 3 is to 2 is their old ratio. This is their old ratio. 
they admit venkat new partner for one third share the share of the new partner is one third and he brings 30000 as his capital he also brings the necessary amount for his share of goodwill the amount of goodwill to be brought in by the new partner is not given here on the other hand it is given he brings goodwill what is necessary what is necessary is to be calculated on the date of admission of a uh, goodwill is valued at rupees 24000 so on the date of admission goodwill is valued at 24000 so this is goodwill of the firm this is not goodwill of the new partner this 24000 is the goodwill of shrikant raman okay and also the new partner venkat now so now we have to find out what is the amount the necessary amount that venkat has to bring in how much amount he would have to bring in total goodwill of the firm is given 24000 shrikant uh, venkat's share is one third of that so he has to bring in 8000 rupees now here there is one more adjustment given a goodwill account appears in the books at rupees 12000 so please note that this has nothing to do with the value of a goodwill which is 24000 so this 20 12000 rupees which is appearing in the books of accounts must be written off it should be written off into the capital accounts of the old partners so vengat brings in the necessary amount it is repeatedly given again towards his share and agrees that existing goodwill must be written off so 12000 rupees we have to write off we have to cancel it into the accounts of the old partners and uh, we have calculated the share of goodwill of vengat 8000 he will bring this is the necessary amount so let us see how this will affect the accounts partners a capital is given capital is uh, credited into his account 30000 which will increase the bank balance in the balance sheet bank account you are adding capital brought by the new partner now when we consider the value of goodwill we found that goodwill is 8000 rupees and this is to be distributed in the ratio of uh, sacrifice here the sacrifice ratio is not given so we are considering at old ratio as the ratio of sacrifice so we will divide 8000 in the ratio of 3 is to 2 so this 3 is to 2 means 3 upon 5 8000 into 3 upon 5 8000 into 2 upon 5 so you will get the amount of goodwill shrikant's share is 4800 raman's share is 3200 so this 8000 rupees will increase your bank balance 8000 rupees increases the bank balance now the partners are not withdrawing but there is a 12000 rupees goodwill which is already there in the books of the firm which appears in the books of the firm and this must be written off this must be written off what is the entry for that the entry to write of goodwill is old partners capital account debtor in their old ratio to goodwill so whenever goodwill is written off old partners capital account must be debited and goodwill account must be cancelled goodwill account appears in the balance sheet means it is a debit balance it is an asset debit balance it is cancelled by crediting and this should be done in the old ratio what is the old ratio 3 is to 2 so when we divide 12000 in 3 is to 2 3 upon 5 and 2 upon 5 we will get 7200 and 4800 so as goodwill is written off in the balance sheet there will be no more goodwill account appearing goodwill account will not appear in the new balance sheet now so far we have learned 
the treatment of goodwill can be of two types. It can be that the new partner brings his share of goodwill in cash. We have seen how to record the transactions, how to record the journal entries, and how to post these entries into the ledger accounts. So if the goodwill is retained and also if goodwill is withdrawn, these two cases we have seen. Now let us see how to record, how to account if the new partner fails to bring his share of goodwill in cash. So there can be situations where a new partner says, I am able to bring only amount towards my capital, but I am not able to bring anything towards goodwill. So in that situation, how should we account it? When the new partner does not bring goodwill in cash, partly or fully, it should be debited to partner's current account. So the new partner's current account must be debited. Now there are two methods of maintaining capital accounts. Capital accounts may be maintained in fluctuating method, where all adjustments are recorded in the partner's capital accounts, or it can be maintained under fixed capital method, you have learned it, where adjustments comes in the partner's current account. Now in the new edition of NCRT textbook, which we follow, it is very specifically given, there is only one option, when the new partner does not bring his share of goodwill, it must be debited to the new partner's current account. The idea could be that, that current account will get wiped out when the new partner earns some profit during the year. At the same time, the old partners will be credited according to their sacrifice. So the journal entry for recording the amount of goodwill not brought in by the new partner is debiting the new partner's cap current account and crediting the old partner's capital accounts in the ratio of sacrifice. The old partners will be happy because they are getting the contribution, the premium amount towards the uh, sacrifice they have done. The new partner's capital account will be kept intact. At the same time, his current account will be generated and that will show a debit balance and he can settle that current account debit balance at, on a later date or it will get wiped out when he gets his share of profit later on. And this looks more appropriate according to the accounting standard 26. We will see that also later on. Let us look at this question. Ajay and Uday are partners in a firm sharing profits and losses in the ratio of 3 is to 2. So 3 is to 2 is the old ratio. They admit Martin, Martin is the new partner, into the firm for one third share. This is the new partner share of profits, which is equally contributed by old partners. So here it is very specifically given what is the sacrifice of old partners. There are two partners, Ajay and Uday. They are sacrificing, contributing equally. That means if Ajay has contributed one share, Uday also contributed one share. So one is to one is the sacrifice ratio. So please note in this question, we are given sacrifice ratio. So as sacrifice ratio is given, we have to distribute the premium, the amount of goodwill, the share of goodwill of the new partner in the sacrifice ratio. It's very important in this question. Martin brings 50,000 as his capital. So this 50,000 we will credit in Martin's capital account by cash or bank. What about goodwill? he is unable to bring necessary amount for his share of goodwill. So here, the new partner is bringing 50,000, which is towards his capital. 
and he fails to bring or he is unable to bring necessary amount towards the goodwill on admission the goodwill is valued at 36000 so this goodwill valued is of the firm goodwill of the firm is 36000 what is the share of the new partner one third so we have to find out one third of 36000 that will be the share of the new partner which comes to 12000 so new partner is supposed to bring 12000 which he is not able to bring so what is the journal entry to record this of course we have to debit new partners current account according to the as26 the new partners current account will be debited and old partners capital account will be credited so ajay account and uday account will be credited by martin's current account okay this is very very important the new partners current account is debited and old partners accounts are credited with 6000 rupees each can you tell me how 6000 yes 12000 goodwill distributed in the ratio of sacrifice which is 1 is to 1 so 6000 we have divided equally half for ajay and half for uday so 6000 6000 will appear in the columns of ajay and uday now this is only a book adjustment there is no actual cash brought in by the new partner towards goodwill so there will be no amount of goodwill added no goodwill amount is added to the bank account we are adding only the capital brought in by uh, uh, the new partner martin there is nothing to be done regarding goodwill because the new partner is unable to bring goodwill there will be no entry now martin's current account will show a debit balance as it is a debit balance in the current account it will appear on the asset side as a 12000 unless it is wiped out by the profits of the firm accounting standard 26 it's connected with the intangible assets it will be interesting to see the accounting standard on purchased goodwill when a firm is acquiring another organization it can result into purchase of goodwill okay the value of the firm purchase the new firm purchase if it is more than the net assets of the firm that will reflect that there is a goodwill in the firm so when goodwill is purchased it can be accounted and if it is accounted in the books it should be written off in the same year or not exceeding 10 years so please note in case of purchased goodwill it may remain in the balance sheet okay but it should be written off as soon as possible and it should not go more than 10 years whereas in case of self generated goodwill goodwill which arises out of the reputation of the business okay what is done the valuation of goodwill on admission of a partner for example this should be written off in the same financial year it cannot be shown in the balance sheet as an asset it should not be shown in the balance sheet as, as an asset it should be written off and this writing off is done by debiting the partner, new partner's current account and crediting the old partners in their sacrifice ratio. So this justifies why we debit the new partner's capital account, uh, sorry, new partner's current account. So this justifies why we debit new partner's current account when the new partner fails to bring his share of goodwill in cash let us look at this question there is a problem given on the screen given below is the balance sheet of a and b so a and b are the old partners who are carrying on partnership business as on march 31st 2017 
A and B share profits and losses in the ratio of 2 is to 1. So, 2 is to 1 is the old ratio. So, you are given old ratio. Balance sheet shows bills payable, creditors, outstanding expenses, capitals of the partners. On the asset side, there is cash in hand and cash at bank, sundry debtors, stock, plant and machinery, building. The total is 4 lakh each. It should tally. C is admitted as a partner on the date of the balance sheet and on the following terms. C will bring his capital rupees for 1 lakh and 60,000 as his share of goodwill for one fourth share in profits. So, the share of the new partner in profit is 1 upon 4, 1 fourth. As his share, the new partner will bring 60,000 as his share of goodwill for one fourth share in profit. So, one fourth share in profits is the share of the new partner. Plant and machinery is to be appreciated. Value of building is to be appreciated. So, there are two assets which are appreciating. This will increase. This also will increase. Stock is found to be overvalued by 4000, which means the value of stock given here, 40,000, is an overvalue. It is inflated figure. So, that means we have to minus the amount we have valued extra. A provision for doubtful debts is to be created. There is no provision here. So, we have to create a provision which will mean our debtors will become less. 5 percentage of the debtors. Creditors were unrecorded to the extent of 1000. So, our creditors, what is shown 58000 is not the actual creditor. There is 1000 not recorded. So, the total creditors will be plus 1000. Okay, these are the adjustments, prepare revaluation account, capital accounts and balance sheet. So, we will open the revaluation account, capital accounts and the balance sheet. Now, let us see how to solve this question. We will begin from the liability side. Bills payable, there is no adjustment. So, we will just copy the bills payable here, 10,000 rupees. Sundry creditors are 58,000, but there is some adjustment. It Adjustment number 5 says creditors were unrecorded to the extent of 1,000. So, we have to add our creditors 58,000 plus 1,000. So, it will become 59,000. This increase in the liabilities is a loss to the business. So, it should be debited in the revaluation account. All expenses and losses are to be debited. We are going to debit all losses. If there is any incomes or gains that will be credited here on the credit side of the revaluation account. So, we will, it is shown on the debit side of revaluation account and that liability 1000 is increased. The new creditors are 59,000. Now, let us take up the next item. So, bills payable, creditors, outstanding expenses, there is no adjustment. So, we will just copy it, 2000 rupees, we will write as it is, 2000 in the balance sheet. Capital accounts are given on the liability side. All liabilities are credit balances. So, capital account will be shown on the credit side of the capital accounts as balances. Capital of A, 1,80,000. Capital of B, 1,50,000. The same figures are taken and transferred to the credit side. Now, let us go to the asset side. On the asset side, cash in hand, 10,000. We will do all the adjustments in the bank account. So, we will write cash in hand as it is 10,000. 
कैश एट बैंक इज फोर्टी थाउजेंड ओके सो कैश एट बैंक इज फोर्टी थाउजेंड वी कैन शो दिस इन साइड द ट्रायल बैलेंस शीट और वी कैन ऑल्सो शो इट एज अ सेपरेट अकाउंट इन द वर्किंग नोट यू कैन डू इट एज अ सेपरेट अकाउंट सो फोर्टी थाउजेंड विल बी शोन एज अ डेबिट बैलेंस इफ यू आर शोइंग इट एज अ सेपरेट अकाउंट देन द कैपिटल ब्रॉड इन बाय द न्यू पार्टनर वन लैख रुपीज वी आर गोइंग टू एड टू द फोर्टी थाउजेंड रुपीज सो वी विल एड वन लैख रुपीज we will also add the goodwill amount brought in by the partner 60000 so 1 lakh plus 60000 plus 40000 the total bank balance will be 2 lakh we will record the capital of the partner in the new partners capital account bank account debtor to new partners capital so new partners capital is credited by bank new partners capital account is credited by bank so bank account is uh, credited sorry capital account is uh, credited now regarding the goodwill 60000 the new partner brings in this is what we mean by premium it should be distributed in the sacrifice ratio what is the sacrifice ratio it is not given as sacrifice ratio is not given we will consider it as equal to the old ratio so 60000 we will divide in the 2 is to 1 ratio among the old partners so we are distributing it in the sacrifice ratio which is 2 is to 1 so 60000 when you divide 40000 and 20000 this goodwill amount is added here to the bank account now let us see that just uh, other items sundry debtors 60000 there is an adjustment number 4 says a provision for doubtful debts is to be created at 5 percentage of debtors so 5 percentage of the debtors 60000 into 5 percentage you will calculate that happens to be 3000 and this is the provision for bad and doubtful debts we are estimating about 3000 rupees of the customers may not pay us they may becoming bankrupt so this is going to be a loss for the business it will appear on the debit side 3000 rupees as a provision for bad and doubtful debts which will mean our balance of the debtors will be less by 3000 and it will be 57000 so the sundry debtors balance will be now 57000 after minusing provision for bad and doubtful debts now we have done the debtors let us go to the stock stock there is an adjustment which we have to minus 40000 is the stock given out of this 10 4000 rupees stock is overvalued so stock is found overvalued by 4000 means the 40000 is not the real value of the stock 4000 is more in that so ultimately we have to minus that when we decrease our stock it will result into a loss so this loss is recorded on the debit side stock in hand 4000 and this is a decreasing our asset so from 40000 we will Minus four thousand, and the amount we are getting is thirty-six thousand. So that's how we will do stock. Now, plan and machinery. There is an adjustment. Building. There is an adjustment. Both are to be appreciated. Plan and machinery appreciated to one lakh twenty thousand. So one lakh twenty thousand is the new value of plan and machinery. That means it is increasing. by 20000 your asset your asset is increasing which is a gain for the business so as it is a gain the increase 20000 is shown on the credit side of the revaluation account and this has to be added to our plan and machinery so 1 lakh plus 20000 is 1 lakh 20000 
1 lakh plus 20,000. You can show it here, 1 lakh plus 20,000. Okay. Then the last item, building, appreciated by 10%. So here, 10% of the building we have to calculate. So 1 lakh 50,000 into 10%, which will amount into 15,000. This is also an increase, appreciation of your asset. It is a gain for your business. So you will show on the credit side of revaluation account 15,000. And this 15,000 we have to add. So 1 lakh 50,000 plus 15,000. Okay, you will show 1 lakh 65,000. Similarly, machinery will be 1 lakh plus 20,000. 1 lakh 20,000. So all the assets we have considered now, we have taken capitals, we have written, okay, capitals are shown. So all the items of the liabilities and assets we have done, we will go through the adjustments to see whether there are any hidden items. Capital is written, share of goodwill is written, that is divided in the sacrifice ratio, which is all ratio. Then planned appreciation, building appreciation, stock overvalued, provision for doubtful debts, creditors unrecorded, everything is done. Now what is remaining is just balancing this account. Look at the revaluation account, the credit side is more, 35,000. So total the 35,000 should be written here also on the debit side. 35,000 minus, 35,000 minus the total of the debit. 4,000 plus 3,000 plus 1,000, 8,000. Okay, this is the profit on revaluation, which is to be divided among the partners in their old ratio, 2 upon 3 and 1 upon 3. So 27,000 into 2 upon 3 is 18,000, 27,000 into 1 upon 3 is 9,000. So 9,000 is the share of B, A, will get 18,000 in the profit on revaluation. And this will increase their capital, so capitals will be credited by revaluation, 18,000 and 9,000. Then we will total all the credit side, 1 lakh 80,000 plus 40,000 plus 18,000, you get 2 lakh 38,000. 2 lakh 38,000 we will write on the debit side, there is nothing on the debit, so we will show the balance as the same. It is important to write the balance in the second last line, just above the total. You can show it here, the balances, instead of showing it on the first line. Then, similarly, we balance the account of B, 1,50,000 plus 20,000 plus 9,000, 1,79,000. The balance is the same amount, 1,79,000. 1 lakh is the capital account of C on the debit credit side. The same amount will come as balances. So balances of the partner A, B and C are found out. Here the credit side is more, credit side is more. So the balances will appear on the liability side. 2 lakh 38,000, 1 lakh 79,000 and 1 lakh. So the total capital is 5 lakh 17,000. Now when you add up the liabilities, you will get 5,88,000. Add up the assets, you will get 5,88,000. So students, this is how we will solve a problem on admission of a partner. You have to start from the liability side, doing one by one item. You will come to the asset side. As and you do each item, go through the additional information given. And there can be some revaluation adjustments. You can add or less, okay, in the balance sheet. If there is a gain, you will show on the credit side of revaluation. If it results in a loss, you will show on the debit side of revaluation. The profit on revaluation is transferred to only old partners' capital accounts in their old ratio. Now regarding goodwill, see whether it is a premium method, means if the partner is bringing cash for goodwill, then it should be recorded. The goodwill amount will be distributed among the partners in their sacrifice ratio. Very important to note this. If the new partner is not able to bring goodwill, the new partner's current account must be debited. Please keep that in mind. According to AIS 26, then 
you will balance the accounts and transfer it ultimately to the balance sheet and the balance sheet will tally. And when your balance sheet tallies, you feel happy. Thank you. Prudent Scholars, powered by Lupin Pharmaceuticals.